All right, situation report time on the RX-7. Admittedly, I have been doing uh, some work off camera just because it's really hard to, to do some, so I'm tired. I'm really tired, my voice hurts, my throat, my throat hurts. I got a cough. Lady at the gas station that uh, had to put a Band-Aid on her finger before she gave me my chicken fingers. I know your blood was in my chicken, and I know you and I are now one. So thank you for inviting me to this blood brothership gang sistership. Whatever, you got me sick. I guess play the intro. I don't really care. Just send me some Sudafed. You know what they say, feed a cold. Rockstar energy drink a cold. For real, what do we got going on today? I'm gonna show you and explain it while I'm, I'm showing it to you. <laughs> um, Clutch Master Reservoir, which I hate this hose clamp. I'm replacing it with a Willwood style. Um, the Willwood's one they sent wasn't uh, large enough. Willwood one they sent wasn't large enough. But Clutch Master's mounted, Brake Master's mounted. I deleted the brake booster on this car um, like maybe a month after I bought it originally. And uh, a lot of people have asked me, how did you delete the brake booster, Logan? So there's no native kit for an RX-7. Nobody sells a kit meant for an FD RX-7 to delete the manual brake booster. Um, there's a company who I'm not gonna name that makes one, but they screwed me on a clutch line one time, and uh, so I'm never gonna mention their name again. It really upset me. And their excuse was the guy that normally crimps those lines was out that day. What? Had a dash three bleeder line blow the cap off, the top of it off. The guy that normally crimps those was on vacay. So we had Chuck. He's got, no, he's got like, he's got like 12 minutes of experience and he did it. Oh no, me, I'll do it, I can do it. This one, is it this? No, okay. Oh, hold on, I got it. It's good, that's good, that's good. So, needless to say, never mind, sorry. Went on a tangent, it's the ADDDD that I have in my head. Da, 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 da. You see that my brake booster's deleted. How did he do it? Is he magic? Is he a sorcerer? How did he do it, dude? So uh, DC Integras, EG Civics, EKs, maybe EK Civics, I don't know. But EGs, DC Integras, those cars in <coughs> RX-7s have the same four bolt pattern for their brake booster. So what did I do? I bought a Password JDM Brake Booster Delete. Man, Password JDM was like a playground for me back in the day when I had my first car, an EK Honda Civic. Ooh, killing the game, man. JDM GSR, June Flywheel, Password JDM. Look at those Motegi FF7 rims, dog. Password JDM carbon fiber whale penis intake VTEC controller set to 3300 RPM just so people can hear me brapping from every stoplight. Man, that car was sick. So I bought their brake booster delete for a Civic. I milled the back of the flange flat so it didn't have the standoffs meant for a Civic. I bolted it up. I bought a Willwood master cylinder. I bolted it up. And then I measured back and forth the prop rod length and how long it needed to be for the brake pedal. And uh, I modified it with a union coupler and uh, some JB Weld, cause you know, it's whatever. I ran this exact same setup, but it was honestly really haggard comparatively. The flange wasn't milled. The bolts wouldn't sit all the way inside of the actual um, delete booster plate. Um, and when I took the brake master cylinder out, the prop rod was crazy bent. So that spooked me. So I took all the brake stuff apart and I fixed the angle of the prop rod, put it all back together. And I did the same thing with the clutch master cylinder as well. But today is gonna to be all about brakes, connecting the brake master to the proportioning valve to the rear brakes and plumbing all of it up using hard line, super hard. Another thing I should <laughs> Another thing I should mention is I'm going to all three AN lines. I'm going to show you what you're going to need to make your own AN brake lines that are hard, super hard AN <coughs> brake lines. 
Number one, you're gonna need uh, 3 16 hard line. So this stuff is, uh, is good. 25 feet of 3 16 hard line. I did the copper nickel option. The steel stuff can get uh, corroded on the inside after 476 years. This stuff's easier to bend. Copper nickel, 3 16 hard line. Say it with me, 3 16 3 16 sick. You're gonna need a 37 degree flare, uh, flare flaring tool kit. 37 though, not 45, 37 degree flaring tool. You're also gonna need a tubing cutter, a little cutie pie. I usually use my teeth to gnaw through the metal, but I figured I'd give myself a break. My molars have been acting up, so cut a ruski right there, bro. Ha! <laughs> ah! Why do you watch this? I'm sorry. I apologize. This is terrible. You're you're also gonna need a bend a bender, a tube and bender. Now, copper line's actually soft. It's easy to bend with your hands. Um, but I got this for something else, because I got something else I gotta bend, if you know what I mean. Hell, <laughs> get your mind out of the gutter. Or don't, whatever, it's your, it's your life. I'm not gonna tell you how to live it. I'm gonna need the tube and bender for my go not on fire kit that helps me not be on fire. But this is quarter inch brake line effectively. So I, I wanted to get the bender for that when I install the fire set passion system. Back to the brakes. So you got your flaring tool, your tube cutter, you got your tube. Now how do we make AN lines? Or AN female ends rather. You need a couple things. First thing you need is you need tube sleeves. You can see them. Three AN tube sleeves. These are from Summit. Um, it comes in packs of six, okay? The other thing you're gonna need is uh, tube nuts, okay? Just a tube nut. You notice it just looks like an AN female end. It's because what it is, is AN female end tube nuts. Tube nuts, tube sleeves, tube bing, flaring tool, and tube cutter. That's what you need. Let's make a line. So this is your tubing cutter, and if you look at those two rollers, and that's the big blade with the Phillips head through it. So there's your two rollers, there's the big blade. You're gonna take this, and you're gonna slip it over your tube, and you're gonna rest the tube in between those two rollers. Like that, okay? now. Hold on a second, because I can't do this with one hand. Give me one second, okay? Movie magic, it's in there. So you see how it's resting between the two rollers and the blade. This is your adjustment knob. You're gonna tighten the adjustment knob and you're just gonna spin this thing around your tubing and tighten it as you go. Get that thing to cut. And after a while, bink! Oh, look! It cut it, per it perfectly square. Perfect. Now, the ends get a little bit rough when you cut them, so I always take some fine sandpaper, keep it flat, and I just go back and forth a few times to clean up the ends. And you get a cut up piece. I need a little tiny piece to go to a T, so that's gonna be that. Next, you got your flare tool. You can see the different size increments for the hose or tubing size. That's your actual flaring clamp, but you take this thing out, if I can get it out, you know, hold on just a second. So you can see that the tubing, the brake tubing is in there. Now you want it exposed just enough. You know, it's probably easier to show you these, this image. You want it exposed just enough. You see the taper, see that the straight up lines are the tubing. You want the taper of the actual clamp to be flush with the end of the tube so that when you drive it down, it flares it to the correct size, 37 degrees. So that that's actually a good visual of how far out the tube needs to be in relation to that taper, that bevel edge right there. So we have our tube in there. Next, we throw the clamp on. I throw the clamp itself in my bench vise. That way I don't have to worry about holding two things at once. And you can see the tip of that <laughs> is in the tube. And when I compress this in, it will actually push this tubing and create that flare that we need to create the seal with the tube nuts and the, um, the tube sleeves. Moderate pressure, this stuff's copper, so it, again, it's gonna bend easy. You can keep an eye on the back of this too to make sure that it's not, the tube isn't backing out of the clamp. 
Once you get all the way flush, the, vent, the, the bench device that's on the bench, let's pop this sucker out. If I can. Movie magic! Movie magic! Movie magic! Hold on. And there you go. 37 degree flare, but we're not done. We are not done. And I have the, uh, the benefit of having two open ended lines. Do not forget to put your line nuts and your tube nuts on these before you flare them if the other end is already terminated. Now, before I go ahead and I slide the line nut and the tube nut onto the tube, I take some fine sandpaper, this is just 400 grit, and I take it to where the clamp was clamping down on the tube, and I just smooth the tubing out so the line nut can slide on and off without issue, and the line sleeve, rather, can slide on and off without issue. <laughs> just standing on my brake lines! <laughs> All right, cool, that's good enough. So now, you take your tube sleeve, and I don't know if you can see, but the edge of this, if the camera focuses, I don't know if it will or not, but the actual edge of this is beveled the other way, flared the other way, to accept the flare of the 37 degree line you just made. So that's your tube sleeve. That seal it makes um, is paramount in keeping your brakes working. After you get the tube sleeve on, you take your tube nut, you slide that over, and then you have a complete line. Sick, it's so sick. Got to do the same to the other end because this is just a union from my master to my T. All right, a little fast forward action. That's the original line we made. That's the line to my bias adjuster. And that is the line to the inside of the cabin. So what I had before was, uh, got this line, this line, I had this line, this line, I had this line. If you go over here, I had this line, this line. You get the idea. There was just lines everywhere. I originally, uh, I originally did an ABS delete in this car and it was soft lines all up front. And I, I just had brake fade issues. I don't think it was the soft lines, but for peace of mind, that's why I'm going to all hard lines and that's why I'm simplifying the system now because the dash is out and it makes it way easier. So let's take a look again. I have a single outlet master cylinder to a brake adjuster right there and that line going into the cabin. So what are we doing in the cabin? I haven't, I haven't bent this fitting straight, but this right here is the line that's coming from the engine bay and that is gonna go to the inside of my line lock. Then the out will go straight up to a T and that will T into the front two calipers. So when I'm doing my burnout, I grab the line lock button, that solenoid engages, locks all that pressure in the front brakes, the rear brakes stay free, and I can burn out. Fuck. All right, I've gotten progressive. <laughs> Fuck. Ugh. I've gotten progressively sicker through the day and uh, really sweaty. But you know what they say, you feed the flu and you starve a, a cold with But with the exception of the front soft lines to go from caliper to hard line and the main rear line that just runs to the rear, which is just a straight shot, all of the hard brake work is done. And I'm going to show you exactly how it's routed with my sweaty face out of the picture. So we got master out to a T. That T goes to a proportioning valve. That proportioning valve sends fluid to the rear. So I'll run a straight line all the way to the rear. The other side of the T goes into the cabin. All these holes are gonna have rubber grommets before you comment and say the brake line's gonna get cut on the metal. They're all gonna have rubber grommets. So the T that goes into the cabin, let's follow it inside. Oh, I'm so sick. All right, so it comes out there. You see the female A and hose. That female is gonna connect to a soft line that I have to have made that soft line will go to that left side of the line lock. The right side of the line lock is what's going to feed the front brakes. So follow that line up to another T. On the left side, that goes to the front left caliper. On the right side, that goes all the way up and over. You can follow it along the dash line to a hole. And you can move it here. 
See that line goes to a hole, and that hole comes out yonder and goes to a mount, the stock mount that was there before. That's dash three female, soft line to the caliper, and we're done. And just for good measure, go over here, soft line from the caliper to that female 3AN, and we're done. I'm gonna eat lunch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat some lunch now. It's 1.15, I got started on this around 9 a.m. So 10, 11, 12, one, four, four and a half hours of work to get the front lines done correctly. There's a couple flares that I did that I wasn't happy with, so I cut them off and redid them. You don't wanna, the copper line, the copper nickel line's super soft. If there's any question that maybe you went too hard in the paint, back it off, cut it off, and redo it. You don't wanna to touch your brakes and have them not be there. And I'm hoping, knock on wood, I'm not jinxing myself. I still have a ton of stuff to get done on the car. There's a lot of little stuff that is just simply not entertaining. And it's just stuff that I'm gonna do on the side without a camera in my hand the whole time. Um, but uh, I'd like to know what you wanna see me work on with the car. I have the whole leash board to wire in. People have asked me for videos on wiring that stuff in. Admittedly, I'm not an expert wirer, wiring person. I'm a hobbyist, so there's cleaner ways to wire stuff. Um, but the engine is with Mike Lau. They're, they're kicking ass and I know he's crazy busy, so I'm letting him do his thing. We have uh, RPM transmissions, face plated trains to go in this thing. Turbo kit has been Cerakoted by my boy, Will Tetro, whose car is insane. If you don't know Will, here's his car. Now you know Will. Will is a big inspiration to me in the FD build. I finished my car last year and then Will came out with his car and I was like, damn, I ain't shit. So I <laughs> cut the front end, oh, I'm sorry, Norm cut the front end off, we caged it, we tubed the front end, redid the turbo kit and uh, Will was a huge inspiration for my car. And little known fact, Will actually picked the color out for the car as well. I told him I wanted to do a blue teal, he mentioned Atlantis blue metallic and it was history. So. Um, let me know, drop a comment, like, subscribe. If you go to clappedout.com slash store, we have decals, we have shirts coming, and I appreciate every single one of you. I'm gonna add me some chicken soup and maybe read a little chicken soup for the, the begrudgingly angry car guy's soul. And begrudgingly is a word you all need to use in a sentence this week. Bye!